Um, so, hello and welcome to this first officially international lecture organized by the Serbian Games Association and our partners at Tentili. Uh, if this is your first time hearing about uh, SGA, we are a trade body NGO for the Serbian gaming industry and our members are companies and studios and teams making uh, great video games and other services in the industry as well. And we really hope our local talent and experience is something we can share uh, with the wider community as well. Uh, this event is a good example of what we have in mind uh, for the future. Uh, my name is Christina from the SGA team. I will be your moderator today and before we move on to our guest and lecturer I would like to share just a few technical details uh, so we can communicate more effectively and uh, use this time to our advantage. So at the off chance you are unfamiliar with Zoom webinars uh, just to run through it very quickly. At the bottom of the screen is the chat option. You can use it to tell us a bit more about yourself, uh, your place in the industry, how you found out about the event, why you are interested in the topic and so on. But if you want to ask our lecturer anything, uh, please use the Q&A section to the left uh, of the chat option. I will make sure all of the questions are answered and please feel free to send them even during the presentation. It's perfectly fine. Uh, we actually encourage you to make this uh, into a dialogue rather than a one-sided presentation. Uh, our presenter for today is someone with uh, really vast and varied experience uh, when it comes to monetization strategies and helping mobile teams achieve more. Uh, I think it's best if he tells us a bit, a bit more in his own words, but also uh, introduces us to uh, Centili in general. So Zoran, welcome and thank you so much for taking the time and dedicating this session to our members and the wider community as well. So why don't you tell us a bit more about yourself and the company you're coming from? Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Uh, and, uh, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, great pleasure, great pleasure and, uh, and honor to be a uh, to be the guest lecturer. I was joking uh, uh, earlier when I was saying, you know, I, you know, I have a reputation for speaking at conferences, at chairing conferences, at, at moderating things. I was never really a lecturer, so I thought maybe I just achieved a new status of actually being able to lecture somebody. But this is going to be everything but a lecture. So, so, uh, and I really, uh, I really uh, appreciate this opportunity because when I. Uh, when I took over as a, as a CEO of Centilli, and I'll introduce the company a little bit later, uh, one of the first uh, one of the first missions uh, we put within organization when I came back after 20 years in Asia, back into into uh, southeastern Europe here in Belgrade, I said we should align ourselves with uh, with associations and with industries that we participate in, and uh, and the Serbian Gaming Association was something that I that I actually double clicked on and I said, we wanna be part of that ecosystem uh, in any possible way we can. And, uh, and if that results in some of these webinars and some of these sharing sessions, then that's probably the great, the great way to start. So, so again, thanks for, thanks for the invitation. I look forward to actually talk about the topic that's kind of very near and dear to what we do at Centili, but then also I hope to the audience that obviously comes from the Gaming, uh, gaming industry itself, which uh, which obviously strives, you know, uh, uh, along the lines of revenue, revenue generation, growth, and everything else that that happens in the ecosystem. I think, as as what Christina uh, uh, mentioned, uh, what we want to do is really turn this into a talk. Uh, and uh, you know, I do have slides, and I, I will present certain things, but you know, I, I would like you to interrupt me at any moment or send those questions. Or uh, maybe wait for the section to to finish, and then maybe we can have a two-way conversation. Because I think a lot of stuff that I say will be, you know, on a provocative nature. It will be also uh, based on experience that has happened in you know in us as a company working in the space. And that brings me, you know, kind of to justification. Why why do I have the right to speak about this? I represent a company uh, that that's actually a leader in the industry when it comes to you know monetizing digital experiences and uh, and a company that's been ranked uh in research and obviously in uh, in uh, in analyst space as a company that has got it right and it's right in the middle of uh, of making sure that digital experiences uh, not just in gaming but any other uh, of that matter being ott video music uh, and anything else uh, that has its way in monetization we were the company that's always the right partner and we we are we are glad to continue to be 
be in that space. So with that experience, I hope to share some of the knowledge uh, that, uh, that we bring. Very quickly, uh, uh, I'm not gonna turn this into a Centilli uh, uh, sales pitch uh, by any means, but for people that are not familiar with the company, you know, uh, a, a tech startup that, uh, that came out of this region that just celebrated 10 years in existence uh, a couple of months ago, which is definitely not a small, not a small uh, uh, achievement, but some, a company that started in a messaging and a communication space uh, born out of uh, another company called Infobip, uh, which is a only unicorn uh, in this part of the world, uh, uh, and uh, very quickly established itself in a payment space and s as a company that has built a platform, built an ecosystem, connected enough uh, digital merchants and uh, telecom operators around the world that 10 years down the road, we are in a space in the right place to actually claim uh, what we can do and share how we add value. And I'll talk about it a little bit later in the context of the, of the story that we're gonna talk about. Company became a truly uh, a global, global player. We are present in 85 countries, connected to 8 billion devices and really helping you know, telco operators, digital merchants, content providers maximize uh, their experiences and obviously in a short, make more money, correct? Uh, now, uh, rather than you know, going uh, into a detail of what we really do at this moment, I'll leave this story about how we help and how we participate at the very, very end. And maybe I'll just focus on a on couple of things we wanted to, I wanted to share with you and I'm, I'm sure it will be a talking point for us as we, as we go to the presentation. Uh, first, I wanna talk about some of the numbers and, and I'm sure many of you on this call are familiar with, with what has happened only in a very, very short period of time, correct? Uh, industry and especially mobile gaming industry, something that in, in 2012 was, you know, somewhere, you know, touching a little bit above $12 billion in generated revenue in a very short period of time last year or this year is projected to hit $110 billion, correct? Uh, a tremendous, uh, a tremendous uh, growth in the space and something that, uh, that has started to disrupt some of the traditional uh, thought process around gaming, but also entertainment itself. And, and the reason for this uh, is multifold, correct? We are entering the maturity of the devices, the adoption of mobile, uh, the growth of the population in the regions where mobile is the first screen uh, compared to maybe the other and traditional screens that we used to have in the past has actually contributed to this. The time spent uh, on, that on that particular screen and that particular device is something that also contributes to, uh, to consumption and to monetization of experiences on that screen. Therefore, there's no, there's no uh, uh, secret why, uh, why we are seeing this type of performance uh, in mobile gaming. And, and then here comes a comparison when you wanna look at what has happened mobile versus console versus PC, correct? From you know an industry that was trailing behind that they didn't have much to offer. App stores obviously didn't uh, play a role and, and that's a huge, that was a huge game changer uh, for many of you that are on this call also, correct? That you didn't have to build and you, you, know, you, you suddenly had a, a brand new uh, a channel, a brand new set of world was opening once the once the app stores and and and, uh, and the entertainment moved into a mobile device uh, here is what has happened we had a quite flat rate performance of uh, of pc and uh, and console type of games and and they're still not uh, insignificant we're still talking about 20 billion plus industries but then if you look at what has happened in mobile uh, which now basically accounts for 51% uh, of revenues. Now, why I'm talking about this and why is this interesting? Because I just want to set up the stage to talk about the gaming as an industry and why it should be looked at and appreciated in a different manner, in a different way. Only a few years ago, from a smaller segment in 2012, 10 billion, 100, $100 billion industry this year, just in mobile gaming. And, and I say this because it's our responsibility, all of us that are participating in an ecosystem, ecosystem for gaming publishers, gaming developers, aggregators, uh, uh, mobile payment companies, and everybody else that then 
actually goes out and reaches either relationship with mobile operators or with the end users to turn the tables around and say, well, hold on, uh, let's look at these industries and look at this industry from a different from a different standpoint. And, and I say this and I, and I argue this all the time when, when I meet operators and when I meet uh, other industries and other people that want to have a piece of gaming industry, do not treat gaming as a value added service anymore. This is not anything else uh, than a very serious and very mature industry. Something that now with a combination of esports, it's just going to explode and these numbers are going to just look even more, more significant. Why is this important? Because that allows us to have a different seat at the table and a different seat in a negotiation when we now talk to uh, uh, players in an ecosystem, especially mobile operators and others that, are, that, are, that have the end relationship e-marketplaces or somebody else uh, that still wants to treat us as some kind of us, as, a, as something that's a 1989 ringtone or, uh, uh, or, or some kind of, or some kind of uh, screensaver. That's not what this is. This is an industry that in itself has players that are more valuable and that make more revenue than all operators combined in a country. And we're talking about all operators that have been in business for 70 years in a traditional industry, something that it's very hard for them to admit, correct? But here we are, we are having five-year-old companies, 10-year-old companies, 15-year-old companies in gaming that today have a bigger valuation than an entire sector in a particular country. And because of that, we, you, deserve a different approach. And that's where we will touch on some of these frictions that exist and continue to exist in a, you know, on a journey to monetize and, uh, and maybe some of the topics that need to change as we continue to have these conversations, correct? Uh, everybody knows this, correct? There's over a million plus games on just on app stores, correct? Uh, and that's actually only, you know, maybe 20% of everything that's up there, but generates 80% of revenue. And that's on, that's, on actual, that's on actual app stores, correct? Now, if you look at, you know, all the other things that exist that are, you know, direct to consumer, that are in different marketplaces and so forth, obviously the numbers are even, even more significant. Now, I, I, wanna, I wanna throw a couple of themes here and, uh, and, um, and start a conversation because uh, part, part of the topic was revenue maximization in some kind of relationship with either operators or, or any other third parties. But I think as an industry, uh, both you know, we in gaming, uh, in publishing, in distribution, in payments, and then also obviously in operators who always felt they have an advantage over us, we were always sucked into this conversation of revenue share. It was convenient, it was, it was easier, it was probably something that kind of sounded like that we were sharing some risk, not just some revenue, but it was always the most painful conversation. And it was never in favor, to be honest, it was never in favor of the publisher, developer, and somebody that has invested and that has been creative and that has you know, probably done the most legwork, correct? And, and the time that, that has arrived, and, and, I, and I truly believe so, is that that, that topic needs to, needs to move into revenue maximization, that, that we need to be a bit more bold and we need to go back into these conversations and say to anybody that now wants to get piece of what we have built and what we think belongs to us to say, well, hold on, without us, you actually have nothing. So why share nothing, correct? Why don't we jointly try to discover and why don't we jointly try to work on how do we extract and maximize wherever the sources of revenues are in the things that we do best and with the channels that per perhaps an operator has or an e-marketplace can provide and so forth. And I'll give you some examples as we move along because once, once we are bold enough and, and you have aggregators or payment companies like Centilli that represent that story on your behalf, if that's not something that maybe a gaming publisher, gaming company can do directly, uh, 
it's something that really changes the dynamic in a conversation and uh, and we'll probably get much more out of that out of the conversation at the same time uh, you would want to work with partners and with aggregators or with uh, with platforms uh, like the one we have built that actually removes some of these additional frictions. I call this a friction, correct? Continuously being in a thought process of revenue share, revenue share, what's enough? Understanding somebody else's cost structure in order to fit in our best rev share. Uh, I think that's old school. I, I, I truly believe that uh, it's, it's more valuable to understand each other's industries and say, how do we get the most out of that user that has an extra dollar to spend, that has an extra euro on his e-wallet, that has been gifted a voucher by somebody else and doesn't know how to use it. And that to me is finding a way to maximize and not necessarily just always share. Uh, we built and we participate in, in, in this ecosystem by removing and understanding frictions that exist in your businesses, in, in how you deal with your end users. You had revenue, that is an issue. You are in continuous uh, chase to acquire the right customer and to make sure he converts. You spend enough marketing money, you spend enough third party investments in order to acquire and to reach to the end user. But at the end of the day, you still wanna make sure the right user converts, the right user comes back uh, and the right user continues to spend. Uh, this can no longer be separate type of thoughts. This cannot be done by two different agencies. This should not be done without data to back it up. This should not be done through shady channels. This should not be done in any other way that jeopardizes your brand, that jeopardizes per, per, perhaps the brand of an aggregator or a monetization company, or for that matter, an operator who needs to report to a regulator somewhere, correct? So friction in managing this uh, uh, from a publisher side, from a gaming company side, when you actually should focus on just developing the best kick-ass creative outcome and entertainment and leave this probably to somebody that has done the lead work and understood how to move this and remove this friction, correct? Uh, over time, uh, another set of frictions that have developed and maybe many of us in gaming industry and entertainment, this is not just particular for gaming, this includes OTT video, this includes many, many different uh, 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 online content uh, sectors, is this concept of authentication and actually knowing who the real customer is. Uh, and I, I'm sure many of you will, will uh, relate to what I'm going to say now. Uh, Many of us in our industry still allow uh, people to register just by with Facebook Connect, just with some header enrichment, just with some Twitter account or with a Google account, correct? 30% uh, of those accounts are fake. Now, so what? Somebody will say, but it's okay, never mind. I still have a subscriber. I still have somebody that was willing to come in and, and, and spend some spend some money so I, I don't really I don't really worry so much about this uh, but let's look at this uh, I have a Facebook account of my dog my golden retriever correct I use my golden retriever account to play to play your game uh, the moment this happens one would say well that's great I have a new account I have a new account I have a new user but your your chief marketing officer, is tomorrow approving a marketing budget so that you will start to place banners on a news feed of my golden retriever. Do you know how many times my golden retriever clicked on any banner? And how many times did I follow through on anything that actually appeared on that, on that news feed that actually promoted anything that came from the marketing money spent from a gaming company or entertainment company Obviously, I spend zero, I, I click zero times, correct? So now one would say, how do you remove this? What do we do? How do we wanna, how do we ensure that we really know that the person that he says he is who he is, uh, and we continue this relationship? There are solutions. Uh, you can do identity through a mobile phone, uh, and, and you can do this through one click that does not 
interfere with the with the customer experience and anything else that that still obviously matters to you and matters to to our industry correct so that we don't throw people out of the environments uh, and make it inconvenient to authenticate and register or even transact with us but we just want to make sure you know that that we acknowledge that there is a friction in this uh, and actually solutions exist and we can probably we can probably do this, do this smart correct Another, another uh, 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 thing that is on our mind as we talk about monetization, it's an ability to collect and monetize through any possible payment channel that's out there, correct? And you know, in the mature markets, we do this through credit cards and through you know, app stores, and, and maybe we're just, we're just happy with this. In a less mature markets, in markets, and you know, I, I hope many of you that, that closely follow uh, a mobile industry, understand very well that 85% of the world is on prepaid. 85% of the world is on prepaid and 80% of the world does not have a bank account. They are underbanked population, but everybody has a smartphone. Everybody likes to be entertained. Everybody does have some disposable income that wants to spend on that, on that part of their life, correct? So. So therefore, not limiting ourselves only what traditionally very well worked and, and we were very well in, in collecting, uh, ability to collect through direct carrier billing, to charging it through your phone bill, postpaid or prepaid matters, having ability to distribute our content inside e-wallets or use e-wallets as additional payment channels. If that's where a user has an additional euro or two to spend, that should be all embedded in the same experience having an ability to monetize through vouchers and now most recently through to uh, virtual currencies and so forth because people like to use this, they like to gift this to each other also, should not be something that is not part of the monetization experience and it's not something that should be isolated or on some other platforms or in some other integrations. That experience should happen in the same place because if it does, it goes back to what I said, it really allows us to maximize revenue, correct? That's, that's what the story is all about. Uh, and then a beautiful uh, uh, story that is developing, and I'm not sure if many people have tried to play with this, is the lending story. When I say lending, uh, here's another, another, another stat. 1% of attempted mobile payments are successful. There's only 1% of attempted mobile payments worldwide that is successful. What's happening with, uh, you know, and some of them get abandoned because of bad experience. Some of them get abandoned because they just don't want to continue. And then there's a large percentage, there's over 70%, if little bit touching on 70%, that people abandoned and cannot complete the purchase because of insufficient funds. So these are, these are our players, these are our users that actually started an experience, wanted to move up the, 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 wanted to move up the level, wanted to buy an extra diamond, uh, they, they wanted to subscribe, they wanted to continue, if it's not gaming, they wanted to complete uh, watching a video or something else, and they couldn't do it because at that moment where they really wanted to transact, they ran out of credit. Correct? Uh, they don't come back anymore. It's very, very difficult, especially in prepaid world and especially uh, in the rest of the world. They will now have to wait for an accelerator to come. They will have to go and find a top up place and so forth. And by that time, they have most likely left and they will not continue what they just attempted. Now, why is this important to actually find a solution? And there is a solution. That's why. That's why we're having this conversation and, and I'll, I'll share some examples is that there are ways that without uh, uh, taking too much risk, without thinking that this has to go through uh, some uh, banking facilities, through some credit bureaus and so forth and so on, micro lending exists. Micro lending is available in such a way that again, you know, companies like ours, and I'm not saying that we are the only ones, there are, there are many out there that could probably talk along these lines, is that we can integrate solutions where at the time when a repeat customer comes back and you know who that is, you have that information, 
when an operator knows that that's a customer that's been on the same number last seven years and tops up, tops up his account every two weeks, so he's some credit worthy, why don't we end up allowing him that 50 cents that he just needed to finish the game, to stay within the community and his buddies that he was maybe competing with, or maybe if he's stuck in traffic, if he wants to finish watching a movie or something that he can continue to do so. So that landing part is something that, that can continue to build, to be a very significant element of revenue maximization because it also creates stickiness. Uh, it seems like that you have landed them the money, right? It's not an operator. It's not a payment company. They don't know us. They don't know any of this. They actually feel, wow, League of Legends has just allowed me to buy something and they will collect for me next time when I top up my phone bill. And that experience is priceless because they will continue what they're doing. At the same time, they'll probably talk about it to their community because as you know, we are you know, in this industry and especially in gaming, that's a community, we'll talk about it and, uh, and actually create an additional loyalty element to that specific brand. So quite an important element that needs to be embedded and that exists and it can be solved uh, as we talk about uh, the revenue maximization the revenue maximization uh, topic correct uh, many of you are familiar with with these issues correct uh, so our two biggest game stores or app stores both apple and google very straightforward policy seven day seven days refund no questions asked so i can download your game I can play and uh, on the seventh day or on the sixth day, I can call up Google and Apple and say, sorry, I didn't, I didn't do this. I didn't like this. My kid pressed the button and I'm not aware of this. And guess what? They will refund the money. This is legitimately your money. This is legitimately the money of the payment provider in between and of an operator that has facilitated this. But people know the tricks and more and more this is happening. At the same time, there's also ways of uh, other fraud that's happening, uh, especially if you use third parties that are making you know, screens clickable all over the place, making fraudulent subscriptions. What happens then? You get blocked, operator gets blocked, and, uh, and we have an issue. So quite a bit of friction again that, uh, that needs to be thought of can be removed uh, block fraud solutions exist within within monetization platforms these days uh, and again something that somebody like you should never focus on uh, and allow experts and somebody else to to move this so i just wanted to bring this up as few as few topics uh, and now somebody will say well how how is this possible is, is it possible that all this can actually be removed and that it happens at the same place i will not sell here again i'm just bringing bringing a, a, a one chart to say that yes, uh, over time, companies like ours have developed a platform, have addressed the constraints and the frictions, and with a single integration into it, have addressed a majority, if not everything that I've just spoke with. We'll go back to this because this is not about Centili, it's about the other two topics that we, that we talked about. Uh, there's two more sections. One is what, what specifically can be done and uh, what are the models with telco bundling? And then also on how conversational commerce uh, can be applied and can be used uh, now these days in order to, uh, to increase revenue and actually get more re-engagement and so forth. Maybe at this moment, I'm not sure, Christina, if there are any questions that came in in a process or if somebody maybe wants to throw a challenge or have a have a chat a little bit about everything that has been said so far um, i'm happy to i'm happy to address it uh thank you zoran but uh, not for now again i'm asking everyone you can feel free to ask anything at any point but uh let's just make maybe a short pause uh in the interest of everyone's attention span um i would like to ask something if, if it's okay with you um we see amazing success stories achieved by small teams so how can these three or five person teams implement some of the th things you're talking about? When should they start thinking about this? 
uh, you know, because I'm, I'm guessing that uh, some of the participants here today are not from uh, big companies. They don't have user acquisition teams, monetization teams. It's all pretty much done by one or two people from the team. Excellent, ex excellent question. Uh, and I think, and, and I think we, you know, we understood also that that could be a that could be a challenge, and that also creates the scale issue for for many of the smaller teams or maybe smaller studios that that might be happy just to serve a specific geography or a specific region. But we know that in this in this business and in this this game, it's all about scale, correct? Uh, and having understood this and having studied uh, the industry, we also understood that user acquisition as a service should also be integrated in a monetization process. And, and it does not have to be uh, something that cannot be afforded or now needs to be managed or internally or maybe outsourced to an agency that, that's expensive and that still use traditional traditional uh, ways of user acquisition and that you actually don't have you don't actually don't have control of what channels they're using which basically also provides you with uncertainty if they have acquired the right right user in a right way uh, is that something that's going to bite you later on if that is discovered that's not been done the way maybe you would approve and so forth so that you know th that friction is also removed these days so platform like ours has an ADM, you know, audience digital marketing API that actually allows for, you know, audience targeting, user acquisition, segment them based on spend, you know, uh, using data, using transaction data that's been collected over 10 years, uh, using data that maybe the studio has uh, during his testing phase or doing the first steps of monetization combined with third party data that has done this in many geos over, over many, many years, combination of this is something that as a service can be provided as you, as you actually uh, decide to start to monetize uh, and, and seek for help, correct? And, uh, and, and it's possible and exists and you know, we can have this conversation and we love to have conversations with small studios because in many cases, when we work with small studios, we don't charge for all year because we understood what it means to scale up. We understood what it, what it means to, for the first time, gain traction, get bad, bad, uh, bad, uh, bread recognition and so forth in order to actually get to a desired stage. And then obviously, you know, gain investors, scale up, go internationally and so forth. And I think it is our role that have already done the pipe work and connected the globe to actually make ourselves available and, uh, and equally, if not more, help small studios and you know, uh, a garage guys with a brilliant creative and brilliant uh, story to tell or, or a game to, to publish and distribute uh, as much as what we do with Gameloft and Tencent and, uh, and Muntum. So uh, that's, uh, that's kind of, hope, hope that that answers. Mm, yeah, thank you so much. And it makes perfect sense. So we can move on to the telco bundling. Yeah. So, uh, telco bundling, uh, why, why is this interesting and why was this kind of connected to the concept of revenue maximization to telco bundling? Because in many cases, you know, we are still in gaming studios and we are still in an industry that relies heavily on, on our you know, position in an in 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 app store and in Google Play. And some of us that are more daring and that have understood other channels are also going direct, going through other game. Uh, game portals and, and monetizing in another way, but still knowing that our end user obviously has a relationship with the telco, that the telco themselves have lost relevance. Telco industry has been the most disrupted industry in the last 15, 20 years. So from an industry that was the king of the kings, correct, and that behaved in the same manner, has become an industry that today is at the verge of irrelevance. I have no idea which SIM card I have in my phone because I have no relationship with my telco. I have relationship with the 11 apps that are on this phone and that's the only thing that I really have. And that is very dangerous and continue to be a very dangerous uh, uh, predicament for the telco industries. Many operators have realized this and started to open up and say, well, okay, Let's see what is that we could do and what is that we can open up in order to number one, remain relevant, 
continue to participate in this huge digital transformation and a digital disruption, which will never end. This is not a project that will end. This is something that's gonna be the way of life and that is gonna continue moving forward. And telco themselves were always very, very difficult to partner with, correct? It was very, very difficult because you will get into a traditional setup. You will get into a, into a, uh, into a conversation that is, that is long to handle, that is difficult to integrate and so forth. And many, many you know, digital disruptors and many companies stayed away from any partnership with telcos, but there's no need, there's no need to do so anymore. And, uh, and uh, you know, because we also internally still need to recognize that we do have these other frictions, correct? We still have a costly acquisition. We you know, have a low retention rates and we need to change this. And we are quite, and sometimes we have an issue and it's quite slow to monetize or what, what, we, what we actually sitting on the asset that we have. And an operator themselves actually allows us to do so. Uh, in our world, we call this fusion because it's uh, a bundling that is deployed to operators, internet service providers, and data providers, and that's that's less important. What is more important is what does it really mean for you? Many of, as uh, as the questions just came, what do we do with a small uh, studio or with a studio that's very well established locally, but now when they think about expansion and going elsewhere, there's a friction. You need to set up local entities. You need to integrate. The engineers need to now build another API. They need to find out what the technical solution is required on another side. Is my experience of how I deliver and how I serve my game or my entertainment, does this now have to change because I'm dealing with a telco? Are there really gonna be any costs that I will be saving and any benefits that I will be getting? And if somebody doesn't understand telco industry, you will probably stay away from it, correct? The good news is this has changed, correct? So companies like ours and platforms like ours do not require anyone anywhere to have any local license anymore. That's what we have done on behalf of all our digital merchants. You don't have to integrate into any other system and into an operator environment ever, ever again. You actually have done this while integrating very first time into into a platform like ours or into an aggregator or into a, into a, 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 a payment organization like ours that removes the other frictions, if you find one. And, uh, and uh, at the same time, we are very aware that you don't want to change your experience. You have built the game and you have built your entertainment in a very specific way, way that you don't want to change this just because you now have a you know, market of, uh, I don't know, extra, few million users or tens of millions of users in a specific region. And because of this, you need to redesign your, your experience. You will never want to do this and you don't have to. And at the same time now, because Telco really wants and needs to stay relevant, you will actually find a partner that's going to spend his own marketing money to propose a way forward and helping user acquisition. And for you and for us in this ecosystem, that's a captive user base. That's something that already has history. That's something that we don't really have to spend a single dollar acquiring as long as operator plays ball with us, correct? And I think that's where the beauty of that relationship comes with an operator. And few models uh, and use cases that we have done uh, and that continue to be built up day in and day out. Uh, some of you are probably familiar with this concept of a soft bundle where you kind of tease and give things for free you know, small bite, free trial, maybe some discount uh, uh, with a telco product, with a set of data that a telco product is offering. Uh, after the expiration of that trial, you can activate and you actually, you actually run a subscription or you have a, you have a new user. It's great for entering new markets. It's great for new kind of target, set, you know, segment targeting or rapid user acquisition just to just to get the volume in and then see and use, use those numbers to see how it really works. Uh, build awareness if you've never been there, if you, if you want to associate yourself with a country or with the operator brand and get some visibility. So there's no, there's very little to lose if you have a very, very good product and if you're a very good 
very good uh, uh, a game or very good uh, a portal of some sort that uh, that maybe has multiple games. Uh, operators are hungry for this, correct? They, as I said, they they want to stay relevant. They want to have something continually offering into their base, correct? So, so the soft bundle, and this is a great success that we have done in many, many cases with Gameloft and many other partners uh, 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 in, a, in a countries and the regions that, uh, that we cover. Then there's a hard bundle, a little bit more sophisticated, maybe a little bit more on a, on a post-paid segment where if we have a very cool entertainment offer, or here in this case, there was a learning uh, app, correct? Language, language learning app. Uh, it can still be a very cool uh, a gaming uh, uh, a, a portal or a game itself, correct? Where we actually end up hard bundling this and actually make it part of a, uh, of a subscription and of a, of a service that an operator does. Uh, and you know, two clicks away, uh, you actually are uh, activating the service, and you're starting you're starting to monetize and make money. This is what that's what's the beauty of this. The new the new way uh, of user acquisition, and something that uh, that we found very very interesting, uh, and it works fantastically well with operators, is data gift. All our plans, and in many many parts of the world. Uh, you know, the consumption of online of data uh, is huge uh, and not everywhere data is free and not everywhere data goes cheap, correct? So one of the ways to stimulate usage and one of the ways to attract customers is actually to gift them data, to give them something back so that they come back and maybe because now they don't need to pay for five gigabyte of data, they have an extra euro or two to spend on the game, on subscription, on some in-app purchases and so forth. What, what happens here is actually we facilitate the bulk purchase of data from the operator, uh, 10,000 gigabyte, 20,000 gigabyte, correct? And then we actually resell it back to gaming publishers and say, well, okay, here it is. You can now cut and paste this in small bits and pieces and the moment you want to attract, you want to communicate to your existing user, or maybe attract a new user from another operator's network, you can offer them free data. And let's see if they, if they come back or if they subscribe or try the game for the very first time. Uh, it's a fantastic way uh, uh, these days to address a specific segment. Uh, and, uh, and it's something that, uh, that works very, very well in gaming, in music specifically for us, also some great, great use cases to just to share with you. And then- also yeah, Sorry, Zoran, uh, maybe this is a, a good uh, time to uh, read you this question that came in from Stefan. Uh, what about benefits for telcos? How do you hook them to work with specific games other than the regular uh, untapped potential that, that you mentioned already? Yeah, so so operators, so this, this is great. So great question, Stefan. Uh, the question, the, the, the operators themselves or whoever runs digital inside the operators unless they have enough information and knowledge we need to bring it to them to say, what, what are the most popular titles? What are the most popular gaming genres? What is that is already demonstrating monetization within their network or in a network of their competitors, correct? Because sometimes you will still have a situation where you will have stubborn operator in a specific country taking a position and saying, you know, I'm the king and you guys sit there, wait and take your, a little percentage and, uh, and I want to have the BK. Uh, uh, that's okay. We love those conversations because we tell bye-bye to this operator because I'm going down taking a taxi and I'm going to the next operator and I'm delivering this brand to them because they will invest marketing money. They want to have an association with a successful with a successful gaming brand or with an upcoming gaming brand or with a brand that is disruptive, that, that looks different than everything that somebody else already has in a country and so forth. And you know, I would always encourage, let's go and talk to the challenger operator. It's not necessarily that we always need to be, we need to go to the incumbent into the largest. Let's go to the challenger and give him the edge. He's willing to invest more. He's willing to risk more. He's willing to try something else because he's playing catch up. He, he wants to have a leap from, correct? So, and those conversations are, 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 are very often much, much easier 
Uh, and obviously, you know, if they don't know how to select the right partner, it's our job to say, okay, for our portfolio, in your market, in your country, in your, in your uh, segments that are, for example, youth, because that's how you position your brand, where here are the, here are the leading brands and here are the leading performance in a specific gaming vertical that maybe you should associate yourself with and do something with them. That could be a short campaign, it could be a longer campaign, it could be a bouquet of gaming players all together, correct? So, so it really, it's really a way of you know, creating an environment that, uh, that makes sense. Hope that answers uh, uh, to some extent. And it actually leads me to this because many operators today, they have their own self-care apps that me and you never use, correct? We have a we have an operator app that kind of checks our balance and I don't know what else it does. I can call customer service, but no relevance, correct? Open one, 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 one time in six months, correct? So, so in order for this to actually continue to make any sense, now they're opening up and say, hold on, this could be a place where I can place your product, where I can place your vouchers, where I can sell your tokens, where you can use my real estate for free because they already invested it. They already, you know, they already have a base that have downloaded it to try to drive traffic back and get some, get some additional usage and traction and so forth. So the fourth model, it's really a telco that is your reseller uh, for, some of the, for some of the great, uh, great uh, work that, uh, that we do within, within, within our industry, correct? And again, you saw a similar graph about Centilli at the beginning. Uh, we have built the building, the, the bundling platform. So everything that I just discussed, it's the same integration from before, no additional changes, nothing else. And then the benefits are actually derived in a relationship with the selected operator in the selected country. Uh, and, it's, and it's possible. Again, it's not a Centilli sales pitch. Uh, maybe there's few competitors in the world out there but, uh, but don't go there. You know, if you want to talk to us, talk to me first. All right. So anything else uh, maybe that, uh, that triggered some ideas and some thoughts and maybe some experiences if somebody wants to share what, uh, what profoundly didn't work uh, in these attempts and, and, uh, and anything else that somebody would want to maybe, uh, maybe, maybe raise at this point. Yeah, that would be great. We would like to hear specific stories from uh, teams here in Serbia or outside. But there was uh, actually a follow-up question. Uh, is there any difference uh, between teams that uh, self-published their games or uh, games that were released through a publisher when it comes to Telco? Does it make a difference for any of the parties involved? Great, great, great question. I, I, think, uh, I think that the publishers, yeah, the publishers themselves, uh, you know, this is this this story is being you know it's it's something that should address both correct if we are talking about publishers because obviously their brand and their might uh, and and everything else that the publisher itself brings uh, I'm, I'm sure that they should have and they will have a level of relationship with somebody that now works on monetization other than only your traditional uh, 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 app stores correct uh, if that doesn't exist this is exactly where uh, where we came in and we event, end up to a gaming aggregator or, or, or a large publisher and said, okay, let's take the titles and let's select what works, correct? And I'll give you an example, correct? You would have, you would have an, IG, an IgG, correct? A, a great, great friend, of, friend of mine runs IgG, correct? And says, Zoran, I have nothing and I, and, I, and I don't have to do anything with my number one and number two title. They're performing very well. They are ranked always they're always ranked in top 10 wherever, wherever I check uh, the performance on all the stores. And therefore, I don't really want to bother uh, of trying to do anything with an operator or anybody else. But then the question comes, but sorry, how about your title number three, four, and five that's ranked number 27, number 86, and number 155, but in a combined value, they still have 10 million gamers and, and you totally forgot about them and you don't want to do anything about it and they're being casually used. Why don't we do something with those, correct? Because you have this idea that as long as my, 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 my silver bullet, it's working, let's just never mind 
about the rest. And I, you know, I, I just, I just refuse to think that that's the right thing to do. So, especially for studios that have invested some serious money in building the rest of the portfolio, and actually, and you know this, correct? You throw things out to try, you see, and uh, sometimes you hope for a big hit. If not, you you need to invest in the next releases, correct? So, so there is there is a story with publishers that that needs to that needs to be, you know catered and that needs to be molded. And then for those that, that want to do things direct, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, uh, many operators, many digital operators, many challenges, many MBNOs, uh, they actually prefer to work directly with smaller setups. They understand the, they still understand very well uh, the hunger of an entrepreneur, the urgency of an entrepreneur, the, you know, the, 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 the innocence that comes from, from that business that still exists. Uh, and I think even that is still applicable even in a, in a big telco space that we were so afraid for such a long time. Trust me, no more. Trust me, no more. We've seen small studios turn the tables around. We've seen the conversations in a, in a, in a boardrooms that allowed small players to become giants uh, just because they actually did ride on the shoulders of an operator of a relationship in that space. Uh, and, uh, and I'm happy, you know, in offline sessions and anybody's interested to follow through and understand a little bit more of intricacy and, and, and business models behind it to share this with anybody from the, from the audience and from the association, because it's a deep topic and it's something that, that we could whiteboard for days. Great, thank you so much. Uh, maybe we can move on to this next part, so we can go back to the questions with the time yeah. remaining. Yeah. Right. And uh, something that uh, something that I'm quite excited about, uh, it's uh, it's this topic of conversational commerce. Uh, and maybe maybe the best thing is to kind of say, well, hold on, what is conversational commerce? Correct. Uh, and and a conversational commerce is actually a moment where we bridge and and and, and bring transaction and commerce into our preferred and most familiar environment. And seven out of 10 people today, and if I talk our people, meaning the millennials and people that are using our, our apps and, 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 and our games, they prefer to communicate through chat and through texting. 82% of these customer, they look and they would want to have an immediate response from a brand. 53 would like to be contacted and they would like to buy within a chat or a messaging environment where today they spend most of the time. We were, we were not very good and we were late. The industry is late in monetizing our chat screens. Some of it through the regulations, some of it is related to data, to privacy and so forth. I think we have moved long uh, away from, from these frictions and from this problem. And today, in an omni-channel environment where you have a set of chat apps, RCS, messaging, uh, uh, chat bots, and so forth, all these environments where today you can legitimately receive a reminder, a promo, a gift that you can immediately redeem, transact, and stay in an environment that you love the most, and that is your texting. And that is what we have converted into a product that is going to take off and that's going to be great, correct? So on one side, you have all the variety of channels that are today being used from chat apps to chatbots to text and RCS, even voice, correct? Embedded with a variety of payment methods so that inside the same environment, you're one click away from actually converting engaging, charging, and actually what, you know, was the beginning of the presentation, maximizing revenue and maximizing that, maximizing that engagement. Uh, we'll, we'll show you some examples, correct? What, 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 what is it in for you? Why is, this, why is this so great? Why do we believe that this is something great? You can have a one-on-one -on -one relationship. You can personalize the message. You can actually, you don't have to blast. You don't have to use the 1995 approach, you know, just throw everything and hope somebody hooks. There's enough data, there's enough evidence that we now know 
who is who and that we can have a one-on-one -on -one engagement. When somebody approaches you with something that you really know, with something that they show that they know about you, you are much more likely to react. You know, Amazon is a great, great example, correct? Try to buy a book on Amazon that you have bought already in the past. Amazon will tell you, sorry, but you have this book already, correct? So from an experience perspective, you think, holy shit, but you know, they could have just made extra money because I'm so forgetful, correct? But no, they actually know that this, this will actually work well for them and it's a one-on-one -on -one experience. And I think that's exactly what we can do in conversational commerce when we send messages and start to target. You can use data smartly, you obviously increase uh, conversions, you create efficiency, you don't waste time, you know if somebody has opened the message, if it's reacted, if not, you activate a different channel. Chat bot didn't work, send them Viber. Viber didn't work, maybe we find them on email if he has left his email. If not, the guy doesn't react, okay, we, we cut our investments and we don't engage, correct? But if somebody reacts, the conversion happens and we actually have an ability to, to, uh, to have commerce. And then social commerce in this environment, since we are inside a chat or inside our messaging, you're also able to share and convert communications into a, into a growth, correct? Because I can forward a promotion that I just got to my friend or to my kid or to my wife or somebody else and suddenly you have a, you have a multiple benefit. So there's really, really merit to this. Here's an example of uh, exactly what, uh, what conversational commerce does in gaming. Let's say an example of a re-engagement, correct? So here's a guy, hasn't played a game for a while, hasn't come back. We know him, he's been, you know, regular with us. We, you know, we, we noticed that, uh, that he hasn't come back for a while and he will say, okay, hey, listen, you know, if there's something we can do, maybe here's a, here's a quick gift that you can claim. Uh, the subscription can be lowered, uh, you know, try this out. You know, we would like to get your opinion or something, but just go back into the, go back into the environment and you are one click away of either subscribing, purchasing, upgrading a plan, uh, rewarding, uh, distributing a voucher, and so forth. So three click, two click environment, and you have a re-engaged user in the space that he prefers the most. And that is where he probably spends 70% of his day. And this is in some kind of in some kind of text or in some kind of chat environment, correct? Uh, this can be linked to different payment methods. You know, in e-commerce, these are examples of, you know, people going to marketplaces, uh, looking at something, repeating, passing through something again. Uh, you, know, you know, these brands can re-engage them and remind them that they looked at something, that they like something. Uh, and if they would like to apply a discount or if they would like to get a promotion, obviously larger ticket items are applied in an e-commerce use case, correct? Uh, shopping cart is a so it's an old story. How many of us put things in a shopping cart and and we left because it was troublesome to exit. We were distracted and so forth. It's this conversational commerce is used in this environment to set reminders and maybe convert and execute and execute the conversion and maybe apply a discount and still have a customer. This is somebody who actually wanted to spend some money, correct? So that's the that's the story. Here's another example. I don't want to spend too much time on non-gaming uh, ideas, but this can be applied in gaming. Correct? So here's a here's a payment due or a reminder that something is about to expire, and it's maybe one click away for a better deal, for a different deal. If there's some doubt, uh, and again, I'm staying in my same preferred channel. Uh, if I'm in Viber, in WhatsApp, if I'm in Line, if I'm in Telegram, if I'm just received an RCS or SMS. Uh, I'm right there when I want to be, and this is quite convenient for me to, to transact. Ticketing, uh, probably one of the greatest examples where with two clicks you can purchase, you can redeem, you can save it, uh, and it's all done, uh, a real commerce in the conversation. Uh, food delivery, uh, another great example, but all I wanted to say that within, within that whole concept of, uh, of conversation, now you can actually really use this omni-channel and use that relationship that already exists uh, with a customer to actually 
you know, bypass some of the traditional channels and try to find him only on social or try to find him only where we think he, he is when actually now we even within within a chat environment, uh, we can we can do this. So this is something obviously just a little bit about us to kind of wrap it up uh, and this solution uh, is something that's uh, that's ready available uh, and uh, and something that we could uh, we could discuss at some point. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, just to kind of summarize a little bit, uh, the whole concept of revenue maximization is really making sure that we make all possible monetization channels available at the right time to the right segment. And this is not just limited to payment channels. This is also, in, you know, this is also a, a method of actually identifying additional environments where we can distribute our content. Our content should start to appear inside e-wallets. E-wallets should not only be payment methods. E-wallets should become super apps because if you are not number one or number two e-wallet in a country, very soon you're irrelevant. So more and more e-wallets are turning into super apps. Look at what's happening to the taxi apps. Everybody that's familiar with Uber, that's familiar with Grab, in our environment here that's familiar with Cargo, they started as a transportation app, a digital transportation app. Today, they have all moved away. Critical mass has been acquired. Now we're adding additional layers. All of them are having gaming vouchers, gaming portals, entertainment tabs. Uh, they're gonna distribute news. They're gonna have sports. They're gonna have short video because there's not gonna be enough coffee shops where I'm gonna be reminded to pay for coffee only and not come back to a wallet. I would want to come back and do something else in the same environment. And it's a great opportunity for gaming because the segment is there. And I think we could, uh, we could make that uh, next destination to publish uh, some, of, uh, some, of, uh, some of our titles and some of the stuff. Uh, we work with telcos, as I said, to help them increase revenue, build bundling, and obviously uh, white label our stuff. But that's, that's not so important. Again, uh, uh, you know, maybe just wrapping up about Centili and why, why I'm excited to have this conversation with you now online and obviously offline. We've done the hard work. We covered the world. We connected 4 billion users. We are, you know, we, we, we signed up 280, 300 operators. Uh, uh, and that's something that will take anybody in this ecosystem many, many, many years. And it's a piece of work that it's not your work. You are creative. You want to focus on producing great, great uh, 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 games and great entertainment. And let somebody else be the partner that actually does the hard work and actually delivers delivers this story. Uh, here are just some of the brands that are that are working with us that we have helped. And uh, and uh, you know you you are very familiar with many of the gaming brands here that uh, that that you can see. Uh, that have selected to work with us because they recognized uh, that this is just not another middleman, that this is not just somebody who understands payments, but actually understands the pain points that gaming developers, gaming publishers, uh, portals themselves, e-markets actually have in order to serve their own customers. So, so with that, uh, I'll kind of wrap up and, uh, you know, and really, really invite you to... Uh, to reach out and you know, first of all, ask questions now and today. But also, here's my direct email. Uh, I read it, so don't worry. And uh, and uh, and I look forward to uh, to have a, a broader discussion and see uh, if any shape or form we can help with advice, with uh, challenging each other, and uh, and if one day uh, we can be of any service, uh, I look forward to to working with you. So thank you again for for. Uh, for your time and for your patience and great questions. And I look forward to some more questions, uh, Christina Idiarin. Great, thank you Zoran so much for this official part. So uh, now we still have some time left to cover all of the questions. Uh, so uh, App Store and Google Play are lowering down actually their share margin with app developers and, and game developers especially. Plus they provide uh, direct carrier billing in their in-app payment option as well. So do you still see incentive for app developers to add uh, DCB payment if payout cannot be better? Uh, I do. Uh, reason uh, they, are, they are lowering they are lowering the the payout simply because 
uh, they already had the uh, indication that many will go direct, that many have found found different different ways of uh, different ways of reach uh, and uh, and carrier billing. Uh, it's only one method, correct? So so I think that's uh, you know you know you know. And first of all, Google and Apple is not in every. They're not covering the whole world. They are not in every. They are not in every country. Uh, and uh, and in some case, you know, there's still question. There's still question of you know people in the market how much information they want to reveal to these two to the, to the, to these two giants. Having said that, uh, that's going to remain, and and they are legit players, and that's going to be that's going to work, and that's going to be there. I think I think what is what is more important with the uptake of e-wallets and with the uptake of alternative e-marketplaces. There's absolutely no reason why uh, any of us should not uh, attempt to, to monetize through those channels, simply because that is where additional income and where additional money exists, correct? You know, all of us know in this sector, there's also a lot of impulse buying, correct? And that, and that impulse buying happens not necessarily only from our traditional channels, correct? So if I have an extra credit left uh, or some extra money left in my wallet, or if I have some vouchers that I haven't redeemed and that somebody got me, uh, I should be somewhere in an, another environment where, uh, where, uh, where I can monetize this. And therefore, therefore uh, I think that's probably the thought process uh, that I'm in favor of. Yes, uh, they have, they have uh, lowered they have lowered the, the the rev share fees when it comes to when it comes to what they want to keep and how they want to treat the operators but trust me uh, i've been on an operator side i've been on a side that has negotiated deals with apple and google and i can i can share with you something without mentioning name i know that there are operators that still receive offers and contracts from google uh, this was actually from apple and signed a 10 year contract with zero revenue share to an operator. Correct? So, and somebody will say, well, that's great. That means that more is gonna, more is gonna go to a publisher and distributor, but hold on, why? You know, uh, uh, I'm not sure Google's always gonna play that game with us uh, and it's always gonna do this. And you see this, what's happening in OTT, Netflix going direct, HBO plus going direct. Many, many have chosen alternative ways to do it because it's not always the cheapest and not always the most convenient effort. It's there, it's gonna stay. We are huge believers, it's still gonna grow, but let's also think about alternative, alternative, uh, an alternative euro uh, that's available. Mm. Uh, also, uh, would the things we talked about today influence game design? Uh, meaning should game developers think about monetization in advance and find best practices to seamlessly use these payment options and not you know influence the gaming experience that's a fantastic question uh, why i say this is a fantastic question because it is our responsibility all of us in the ecosystem to get familiar with what's happening in the industry and what are the trends and what are the behaviors that are most likely gonna prevail moving forward and because of that we need to get familiar with with the game design process and how how this really happens and how and what it really takes so that if we come up with another brilliant idea of some kind of coins or something else that's going to take up in Japan next year and that suddenly closes the door because no we can't do this because no games have been designed to actually accept this what's the point of coming up with a payment method and actually and actually working on this correct mm -hmm. so it exactly. is it, it is our responsibility to get to know each other's industry from to get to know it, correct? Not to do each other's job, but get to know it so that then we can jointly decide this makes sense or it doesn't. I would more think that no, we should not change the design. We should just make sure that it's much more convenient to access a multitude of payment options without inconveniencing the experience and the user. And if, and, if, and if that is somehow embedded in the design better than what it is today, and I still think we're doing quite well, uh, other, there, other than where you have payment providers that 
force their payment pages and, and take you through other environments, which sucks, correct? But as long as we stay within your environment, and I think that is still you know, doable, and I believe it should be like this, uh, then I would not think that that, uh, that that should actually interfere with the way with the way you design your games uh, as much as maybe you know how websites need to be designed in e-commerce and so forth for for other for other reasons, mm -hmm. security and, and so forth. Correct. Mm, thank you. And uh, maybe this could be our final question for today. Are these options available to games in soft launch as well, uh, which would particularly be useful to games launching in specific markets that are maybe infamous for players with subpar devices or maybe lower income and so on, or uh -huh. just fully launched games? Yeah, F fantastic question again. And, and, and whoever's asking, I, I really applaud you because, because you understand, you understand the, the complexities. Uh, in our environment, so I'll, I'll speak for Centilli, we have a sandbox exactly to do this, correct? So everything that you have seen and everything that we have connected around the world, 80 countries and 280 operators, everything is available in the sandbox. You want to test the market, you want to go in and see how it works and, and find the first, uh, find the first segment to, to test it out and see if there's, a, if there's a good feedback and so forth. That's exactly how we work. Uh, I can't say this for others. I hope they do. I know some they do. Uh, uh, competitors that got it, correct? And that, that makes sense. But, uh, but that's, exactly, that's exactly what our role is to help, correct? You want to make sure you also right, make the right move. You also make sure the right integration is done. You also want to you know, you know, find a, a proof of concept in a specific geo or maybe even with a specific segment just to maybe finish your version, correct? And see if there's some feedback that can be gathered because that feedback is going to allow as well. Okay, if you now you know finish the next two levels, then we're willing to pay and upgrade to the next stage and so forth. And I think you know if if we don't participate in this, we are I'm adding no value. If I did participate in this, you will have more appreciation exactly for this relationship. And guess what? I'm sure you're going to come back to the same to the same partner. To actually take you further than maybe choose somebody else. So, so yeah, I think that's a great question. It's a great requirement. Uh, it's possible, uh, and uh, and you know, uh, as somebody like us uh, would actually like to uh, invite anybody that has something that wants to prove and test with. Because uh, you have, you know, we we are connected to 280 operators around the world, right? From the smallest ones to the largest one. There's enough segment somewhere. That always wants to try something new. There's always a bunch of guys that would want to hack into something. There's always there's always somebody that wants to disrupt, that wants to be different, correct? Uh, and and because of that, because it's such a diverse world, correct, of sophisticated and advanced to mature and immature, uh, it's not difficult to find your proof of concept sandbox. It's not difficult to find somebody who will who will you know be your be your test kit. Uh, and actually provide feedback and, uh, and maybe even become a joint developer with you to finish something as you move forward. So, so, so the answer is yes, yes, and yes. Uh, and, uh, and happy to, uh, happy to work with you guys uh, if, uh, if that's something that's on your mind. Great. Well, thank you, Zoran, so much. This was very illuminating, I'm sure, to both you know small, medium teams and, and people from big companies that joined us today as well. Uh, like you said, you're always at disposal, right, for anyone with additional questions. Uh, maybe we didn't agree beforehand, but perhaps we could send out a PDF of the presentation we saw today to all the participants. Great. Yeah, Yes. Cool. So thank you so much. Uh, I'm hoping this is only the, the first of these uh, events we'll be doing together in the future, maybe to some more specific topics, depending on the follow up and the, the feedback we get for this session. So thank you, Zoran, again so much. And to everyone that stayed with us till the end, uh, you can follow everything we're doing at all of our social media channels, or you can simply, simply visit uh, sga.rs to uh, make sure you are on top of all of our uh, future events. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.